Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you who are joining our webinar, our webcast today. I am really excited to have this topic uh, for you. Uh, recently, uh, my colleague and I, Kurt, were in Amsterdam listening to Haresh give this tremendous presentation on working capital management, and I thought it would be a great subject for all of you. Uh, and as I did some research, I came to learn that this is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, there's over, if you look at the research, there's over a trillion dollars worth of uh, value that can be captured by focusing on working capital management. Uh, a lot of that is in the areas, of course, of AP, AR, and inventory, uh, probably being in the range to 350 to $450 million in each of those areas. And you'll hear a bit more about that from Haresh and Kurt in a few minutes. Uh, but with that in mind, what I'd like to do uh, is a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with our webinars, uh, we will record them. So this is being recorded uh, and it will be available on our website in 24 to 48 hours uh, for you to share and uh, uh, take advantage of. <clears throat> I'd like to encourage everybody, feel free to ask questions throughout this session. Uh, I will be monitoring the question uh, area and we'll uh, ask the team for uh, their input on this. Uh, and of course, you can download previous webinars from our home page. Uh, you can go here uh, if you want to download those. You can see here we've circled the resource center, so feel free. Uh, by the way, don't forget, uh, we uh, will be having a Cloud for Treasury webinar coming up in September, and I think that's another one uh, we'll be doing together with Haresh, Kurt, and some other folks, one that you don't want to miss. And then as you scroll down the home page, you can see here we have webinars, and you can uh, click on and link to any of those old webinars. So I'd love to see you go ahead and do that. Finally, certainly join us on bramasall.com. Sign up for our newsletter. You'll get some great new information. Uh, join us at Facebook, uh, or you can come here uh, and uh, join us on LinkedIn. Uh, so join that conversation, and we have a number of folks who monitor that on a continuing basis. So, so go ahead and do that. Um, I take a moment to, I've done a, a little bit of an introduction, but let me introduce in a moment, uh, Kurt and Haresh. Uh, they'll be doing an overview of working capital management, really giving you a perspective and focus on why you should be looking at this. Talk about the SAP solutions, and then Kurt and Haresh will be doing, or Haresh and Kurt will be doing a couple of demos, hopefully, of the different solution areas, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so <clears throat> let me introduce Kurt and Haresh. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with these guys for uh, several months uh, now, and it's really been an exciting opportunity for me. Kurt uh, Grotenhuis is the head of our, of our uh, Bramasol Treasury practice. He brings over 25 years of SAP Treasury uh, experience, both from a having worked at SAP and managed the Treasury solution there, as well as uh, really practical hands-on experience of working on several dozen uh, projects and delivering those successfully uh, as a partner in other companies as well as an independent. So welcome, Kurt. And then uh, Haresh, uh, who is also similarly deeply experienced in the treasury space, working at companies such as Merck Pharmaceuticals uh, and Deloitte, and has come to SAP as the solution owner uh, for the working capital management solution. Uh, so welcome, guys. Uh, with that, I am going to make Kurt, I mean, I'm Haresh, I'm going to try and make you the presenter. So let's see how we do. Thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction. I can uh, see the... Okay. Uh, let me see if I can uh, share my screen. I'm going to just... Uh, there we go. We see your screen. In presentation mode. Okay, um, do you see my screen? I do indeed. Thank you very much. So let's start by talking about what is working capital and why is it so important for companies? So you can define working capital or free cash flow, which is a quick barometer of uh, how a company is doing. If you have better working capital availability, you probably have better indicators, which we'll see in a moment, 
how some of the other companies have fared who did manage their working capital more closely than their peer group or competitors. So let's define uh, what working capital uh, impact could be. This is a picture of how some of the companies that were analyzed by Hackett Group, who seems to be a very prominent organization in uh, working capital research, they did the analysis of 102, almost 1,000 uh, companies, uh, largest companies in the world, and they tracked them over a period of time. So this big green circle is, is the total set of companies that were chosen. The next circle, the yellow circle, or the, um, the cloudy yellow circle, basically represents the 102 of the 1,000 companies, which is around 10% that improved their cash to cash cycle in the previous three years. As you move forward to five years, 31% of the remaining 102, which is around 3% of the total companies, they continue to manage their cash to cash cycle. And for the remaining um, eight companies, they continued to manage their cash to cash cycle for seven years. And you can see that the size of the circle is diminishing. One thing that it tells is that managing your working capital is not an easy task. Not everybody can sustain it. But when you pay your attention to a layer of this slide, you will see that the companies that actually were able to sustain the working capital management initiatives for seven years, see where, they, where their metrics moved their revenue went up 84%. Their cash on hand went up 260%. Their cash as a percentage of revenue went up 95%. These are some really remarkable metrics. And if you look at the right side, just a simple analysis, if a company is able to reduce their cash to cash cycle by seven days, it impacts their gross margin positively by 1.2%. It impacts their earnings before interest, tax depreciation, and amortization by 1.1%, and return on employed capital goes up by 0.8%. These are very significant numbers if you think about a company that has a scale and size of a couple of billion dollars. So let's try to define what the cash conversion cycle means. It is in very simple term, it is the same as your DSO metric plus DIO metric minus DPO metric, and that gives you the number of cash to cash cycle. In essence, it tells you for how long your cash stays deployed in business activities. Um, and and it, it's, it's a very good indicator of uh, you know, how well you're utilizing the available resources in your organization. So if we try to define them, cash to cash conversion cycle is the um, time for which the capital is tied up in the normal course of business, which is part which makes um, which actually is constituted by the date sales outstanding, which is equal to goods or services provided to customers who have not yet paid the bills. DIO is the time that your inventory stays in the manufacturing process, and DPO is the time um, it takes for you to pay your vendors. The improvements in cash to cash cycle increase the financial ability of your company to address so the things such as how well you grab the newer opportunities that are available in the marketplace. If you have more free cash, if you have more available cash to invest, you are able to grab those opportunities and turn your revenues around. So why is there a renewed focus on cash to cash cycle? There are several factors that are impacting this. The economic volatility has increased in the past uh, few years, I would say even almost a decade since the big uh, crash happened in 2008. Interest rates keep fluctuating. The geopolitical uncertainties are um, increasing. Uh, if, you, if you observe uh, what's happening in the trade wars and, and things like that, for businesses, 
uncertainty is not good. The pressure on margins is also going up. Most companies are pressured to increase their margins and there's a decrease in the budgets and spendings. New business models are evolving. If you look at uh, the companies that have come up in the last five, seven, maybe 10 years, you'll see a completely different landscape of the type of companies they are. They are adopting newer business models. They're leveraging data for their benefit. There's increased globalization. There are new markets that are being explored. Supply chains are not limited to local, local regions or markets. They are spanning across the globe, in fact, across continents. And the focus on risk management is also increasing. Companies are wanting to have their supply chains not disrupted by events that happen around the globe. They want to mitigate the risk from financial risk and fraud. And last but not the least, companies always face regulatory challenges in the environments and the markets that they operate in. There's increased scrutiny about the activities that companies engage in. And on top, there are country-specific regulations that are also coming in place. So with that in mind, treasury management as a whole and working capital in particular is looking to impact some of the levers that they have to impact the cash to cash cycle. If you look at the top three buckets here on the right side of the picture, customer service level, supply chain demand variability and supply chain risk, these are some of the drivers that impact the DIO or day's inventory outstanding metric. If you go clockwise, the cash flow objectives, PL and balance sheet management, as well as fair market payment terms, sort of relate to the DPO or the payables management metric. And how much cash flow you need versus your revenue to margin ratio, or how do you satisfy your customer demands, those are some of the drivers that impact the DSO or day sales outstanding metric. If you look at your balance sheet, it already has the data that is needed to manage your working capital. Working capital, as I was describing on, on, uh, in, the, in the beginning of this presentation, has current assets and current liabilities as its components. If you look at, on the left side of this table, cash, marketable securities, receivables, inventory prepaids, and other current assets, they all have a place in your GL. And if you look at the blue boxes that are connecting them, are the capabilities that our customers, treasury or broader S4 customers, have access to utilize. So if you are using treasury solutions, you have access to the cash that is sitting in your system. You can also have access to the marketable securities that are uh, available in your GL for view. If you are managing the receivables, you can have receivables management. If you're managing inventory, you have access to your inventory data through inventory management applications. And of course, um, GL is a part of the finance solutions anyway. If you come to the right, you have accounts payables, current maturities of long-term debt, notes payables, accrued expenses, and so on and so forth are on your GL, which are key components of working capital. They are accessible through the applications delivered by SAP around payables management, treasury, payroll and tax management, et cetera, and uh, GM. So it is easy to see that the items that impact your working capital are already in your SAP system. What you really need to be able to do to manage your working capital better is to be able to summarize them so that you can make decisions out of it. You need the ability to analyze this data and you need to be able to make changes to your business processes, to the way you run your business, and control and monitor these processes well. This is where the power of SAP comes in. You have the data in the system. You have the applications that summarize that data, analyze it, provide you tools to control and manage the process. That takes us to my next page which sort of lays it out in a, in a slightly different way. Here's how a treasury or a finance organization would look at 
the solutions that help them in improving their working capital management. Let's start with the blue boxes on the left. You have receivables management, payables management, and business planning for supply chain. If you have questions such as how can you reduce the overall cash to cash cycle in your company? How can you impact the metrics such as DSODP or DIO? You have your answers in these three areas. If you move to the right, if your questions are around how much cash do you have today and how much you will have in the future, or how can you manage and deploy your cash faster, quicker, and with more transparency, or if you are asking how much do you need to fund a business at lowest risk, you have your answers in the treasury management solutions around cash and liquidity management, payments, bank connectivity, debt, investment, and risk management. These applications combined impact your cash conversion cycle as well as your available liquidity and the risk that, it, um, that exists in the ecosystem. And if you roll all of these up to a higher level view, you have the ability in SAP to manage these metric metrics at the highest level, including the executive dashboard in your boardroom and drill it down to these individual levels and focus on the areas where your actions will have the most impact. Why is this important? Why, why are SAP solutions offering you some of the most advanced capabilities? Because you are dealing with a single source of truth. All of these applications, the blue and the orange up in the top, I explained, relies on the quality of data that is available for these applications. And unless you have a single source of truth, unless you have access, seamless access to this data, unless you have software that captures the data, rolls it up, reflects it in the right fashion, and takes your actions right into the system directly without any other system or login or intervention, that is the power that you need to run a comprehensive working capital management solution. You need instant insights. If you have data that is old, which is batched over a monthly period or a quarterly period, or just it takes weeks to get you the right information, that's not good. You really need insights instantly. And there comes in handy the S4 HANA platform, which is based on the HANA database, which is in-memory data. And so each one of these applications on the left really are able to access that data as it is happening. Superior analytics and control is another element. If you have the data, but it is available in 100,000 rows for you to look at, that's not what you expect. To be able to make the decisions, you need to have this data available to you in an analytics format where you look at the top level metric, see how you're performing, how you're performing against the benchmark, how you're performing against your peers, and then from there, you start drilling down to the specific areas where you're lagging. Um, it could be by region, it could be by product, it could be by customer, it could be by vendor, it could be by a lot of different parameters. And if your, your, your analytics solution is able to give you that level of slicing and dicing capability, you really have the power to make a difference. It should be intuitive, which means you really should not have to learn uh, for 20 years to really figure out how to use that. It should be really intuitive. It should be um, very natural to you the same way as you use your iPhones or iPads or, or Samsung phones or whatever device you use. This information should be available to you in that user accessible manner. And last but not the least, we all live in a constantly changing world, which means these technologies and these applications should not remain static. They should always adopt the latest and greatest inventions that are happening in the technology space, in the business process space, in the world. And you need a company that can offer constant innovation in these areas delivered to you on your system right on. These are some of the factors which are expanding the view of a treasurer and a finance organization as a whole in their effort to manage working capital. With that, Set up, I am going to ask my um, friend and partner in crime, Kurt, to talk about some of the 
applications that could be helpful for customers in the area of payments and cash management, and the next stage on debt and liquidity management. Sorry, debt and uh, investment management. Hurt, over to you. Thanks, Harish. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, everybody who's on, on the webinar. I'm glad you could attend. Um, thanks for walking us through a lot of the foundations of working capital, Harish. I mean, it is without a doubt that working capital is a daily necessity for businesses. And it is without a doubt um, that a solution for working capital needs to be highly integrated and have all the components of it. Businesses often get in trouble due to the lack of cash or cash vis visibility to cash. And, and that really comes down to the availability of data, whether that's from receivables, whether that's from payables, or for your cash and liquidity management purposes in SAP and all the various functionality that SAP has to offer. Um, the ability to, to monitor this data, whether it's through bank account management and the aspects of individual bank accounts that, that a company needs to um, manage to the payments, the outgoing of cash, um, and the solutions that are around that. And SAP has has new solutions around um, payment management that um, are far more advanced in the marketplace than you will find elsewhere. Um, as well as just your daily cash position, your cash management. Um, what is your current cash position? What is your uh, future cash position? What is your cash forecast? The how are what is your ability to do cash flow analyzing? What you see on the screen here are all the various components of cash and liquidity management. And one of the aspects also that is very um, key in making payments is connectivity to banks. And SAP offers uh, new functionality with multi-bank connectivity to, to streamline that connection to the banks, to bring that information um, for your cash position, for your bank accounts, for your bank account reporting, for your FBAR reporting, um, for fee analysis, makes that much more seamless than it's ever been. On the outgoing side, it also makes your payments um, more streamlined and more efficient. So when you take a look at the, the, the very bottom of this page, you look at the overall stream of the end-to-end -end process, which is maintaining your master data for your banks and your business partners, optimizing your cash, whether it's through payments, cash management, or even in-house cash, cash pooling and netting, payments and receipts, bank communications, and actually tracking and monitoring for, for audit and control and governance. Um, all of these aspects are found within SAP. And this is, this is what we would encompass in the overall, when we say cash management with SAP, this is what we'd be talking about. If we go on to the next screen, um, we have a little bit uh, different view. This is a view from a, the pure treasury side, so debt investments and risk management. They play an important factor, as, as a few slides back that Haresh noted. Um, what you do with your cash, if you have too much of it, obviously you're either making investments you are paying down debt, or if you don't have enough debt, or excuse me, if you don't have enough cash, you're actually using your cash, uh, the functionality found within cash management to determine what type of debt you should go into, how you would manage this debt, looking at your various debt tranches, things of this sort. These are the, the creation and the managing of deals. And this plays a very important role in working capital as well. Once we have that position, we have either our investments or our debt, we take a look at our exposures, we may have some other, we may need to um, consider how to minimize our exposures, minimize our risk from through uh, foreign exchange transactions, through hedge management, um, and integrating that process via trading portals, which once again, SAP has provided a a solution in S4 that is um, 
equal to anything out in the marketplace. Once we get the transactionals, transactions into the system, we then go move on to um, the analysis and look at exactly where we are, what we're doing, um, how does do, it sit throughout the whole working capital profile. Um, and the whole end-to-end -end cycle, again, is on the, is on the bottom. And so when you wrap this together between cash management treasury, the aspect that um, Haresh had mentioned just a few slides back on the right-hand slide of the expanding the view of treasury, that encompasses everything on the right-hand side. Those solutions have been enhanced uh, and are best of class as, it, as, it, uh, as people look at treasury solutions today. And the other aspect of working capital, including receivables and payables, and Haresh, I'm going to lob the presentation back over to you to talk about uh, receivables and payables and, and additional information as we move into our demo. Thank you, Kurt. And that was a good uh, overview into some of the capabilities that are on the table. Let's dive into the next uh, section, which is on receivables management. So. I'm just going to jump through and make sure we see the whole picture at once. Receivables management has several components as well. And for those of us who have uh, been involved in some of the activities around commercial uh, processes of sales orders and, and credit checks and so on, would recognize that they are very vital to managing how your receivables will ultimately turn up. So looking at the bottom here, some of the chevrons um, really focus on the areas that are covered under the receivables management area. You need to be able to perform efficient credit checks for the customer so that you don't end up into longer DSOs where customers don't have money to pay you. Um, you want to issue your invoices in time and manage that whole process in a very efficient way so that customers have accurate information so that they don't dispute it and you get your cash quickly. You need to be able to handle customers' payments. If they pay you, you really need to have that cash available to you instantly. Well, that will that'll be your goal. At the same time, you want that visibility of cash to your treasurer as well. So treasurer needs to be able to instantly know that the cash is, is incoming on a certain day, it's committed, and they can start planning um, other activities by utilizing the cash that is projected on their cash flow forecast, which is one of the pieces that Kurt was referring to earlier on the cash flow forecasting uh, picture. You want to be able to resolve your disputes. So if at all a customer has a dispute and is not willing to pay on time or has some other issues, you really need the ability to handle the disputes in, a, in the most efficient and, and, and um, friendly way with your customers. You want to be able to collect your cash if there are delays, if there are issues, if there, there needs to be a, a work list that needs to be managed. You want to be able to do that in a very efficient way and also have proper workflows in place which allow you to route or escalate the issue at the right level. And finally, if uh, um, well, finally, if you have um, the payments with you, then you need to be able to settle it, reconcile it, account for it, and move on. All these processes have to be completely tied to each other. You need to have good data analytics around it so that you can really pinpoint the problems in, in, in a specific area and address it. And all the things that are described here about these chevrons, such as working capital analysis, such as credit management or credit integration, these are all the different um, functionality that are available as a part of SAP's receivables management solution. Let's jump into some of the uh, areas where our existing customers have benefited by leveraging these solutions. So in case of receivables and cash management, you can see 19% uh, is the overdue accounts reduction that customers are able to benefit from. The financing costs, some customers that we have analyzed, this is SAP benchmarking data. Um, so there, there have been um, statistics that prove that customers have been able to reduce their financing costs by 82%. How do they do that? they're able to leverage the cash that is freed up by managing their working capital more efficiently. The AR write-offs have um, gone down for 
uh, several companies, and that's represented in the uh, third uh, metric on the right side bottom. If you look at the inventory functions, the service levels have gone up, and the investment in your inventory have gone down. Again, the source for this data is from our own benchmarking. We continue to talk to our customers and receive feedback about uh, the benefits they receive from uh, our applications. And um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a group that collects all this data and uh, catalogs it. So this is the, this is the uh, uh, output of that effort. Let's look at the final piece of the puzzle, the payables management. And here, even though we have similar solutions as I was describing in the receivables management, I'm gonna focus more on some of the things that allow the customers to look at the whole value chain and look at some of the very prominent options that most of our customers are really looking to dig into. And these are revolving around the capabilities that allow the buyers and suppliers to come together. So at the center is our SAP Ariba solution. It doesn't have to be purely SAP Ariba because SAP Ariba actually is uh, completely tied to the SAP S4 applications. But for the purpose of this discussion, let us focus on the Ariba network, which has uh, a lot to uh, lot of lot of um, um, inputs into the overall payables management process. So what it does is it brings the buyers and suppliers together. It allows you to manage the processes of sourcing and contracting, requesting and buying, and invoicing and paying. And here, the buyers and sellers are not working in silos. They are both on the same network, which means the transparency between the two is quite high. And the delays that typically exist in the ecosystem where you have completely disconnected customers does not exist. This does not limit to direct merchandise. Uh, it, it can be applied to indirect merchandise, labor and services, as well as travel and expenses. There are, there are very large number of buyers and sellers on this network. Um, the last number I heard was uh, at least a million plus. It probably is more than that. And the fact that you have so many buyers and sellers on this network whose credibility has been established on this network and can be monitored and tracked is a very powerful tool for you to take up various options, such as invoicing commerce automation. You can automate when both sides are capable to exchange information tied to their own processes. You can use technologies that allow them to use payments and cards. I'll speak about some of them in the next page. You can also benefit from some of the discounting that can be continuous instead of uh, just through your vendor agreements, and I'll talk about uh, what dynamic discounting might look like. And you can also take benefits from uh, supply chain financing. If you're a buyer, you can, um, you can take some financing help from the uh, companies that uh, offer it. If you are a seller, you can get paid faster without having to wait until the end of the term if you need more working capital. So what do we mean by financing on the network? So if you're on this network, or if you're using SAP capabilities on this network, you are on the network, and you have multiple options. We have listed the three main options that our customers pick from as they look to manage their day table outstanding metric. Option number one is dynamic discounting. Here, you basically agree to a scaled discount. For example, you have 10% discount for 10 days, gradually going down to 0% when you get paid in 50 days. Option number two is supply chain financing, where you actually get paid faster if you're a supplier. You get paid for your shipments faster by getting the funding from a, credit, uh, from a funding agency who have knowledge about the credit rating of the purchaser. This is an important element. If you are not on the network, you don't have good understanding of the credit rating of the counterparty, which means the financer is also not going to have that insight and will not be able to provide the credit. By the fact that both of these parties are on the network and we have parties who are offering such capabilities on our network, you can benefit from supply chain financing processes. And last but not the least, another prominent option which has um, expanded in the last few years 
is using payment cards. So companies can issue payment cards, which allows them to manage their budget and constraints around uh, their expenses. And to a seller, they're able to utilize the payment card to get paid faster and in, in a more efficient way. These are some of the uh, top rated programs that are available on the payables management. Of course, on top of this, there are a lot of uh, functionality. There is a lot of functionality in SAP, which is integrated with these processes around managing the vendors, managing the payment terms, and um, managing the purchasing orders, contracts, etc. They're all integrated with this network to give you a complete solution end to end. So before I go into a call to action, I want to jump into the system and show you some of these capabilities in action. Um, we don't have time to go through every little step that would typically happen as you manage your working capital, but I want to give you an overview of how a safety system has been designed to cater to some of these um, things that we were just talking about. So before we go into the actual system and see some of the applications, I want to talk about the user friendliness capabilities. And this was one of the elements I was describing earlier. The solution that you want to own needs to be very user friendly. And SAP s applications are exactly that. Over the last five to seven years, SAP has made billions of dollars of investment in improving its legacy applications. And now they are best in class, cutting edge, user friendly applications. So what you see on the screen are the tiles. These are similar to what you have on your iPhones. Then there are tabs on the top. These tabs can be configured and set up exactly the way you prefer. The tiles are also controlled by the access that you have behind the scenes. The user profile allows you to set up the look and feel of the screen in the right fashion, the way you prefer. The numbers on these tiles, and I want to go back to this one where we have set some of these numbers. The numbers on these tiles reflect the KPIs. So if you are talking about a DSO metric, you can actually set up a DSO metric right at this top level, which I may be able to show you in another um, picture um, or another area a little bit later. So these, these um, metrics can be set up. You can set up thresholds. In fact, I have an example for you. In this case, the critical working capital has been established for a company in, in the system. And it is actually going to show you this bar as you move um, up and down in your availability of working capital, this bar is going to move. Right now it's green, that means you're within the threshold. If it goes below, it can actually start turning into orange and then red. And that's the power that you get at the highest level. So you don't really have to um, worry if it's not showing red because things are going all right. Then there are um, capabilities on the screen around having a search, very powerful tool which allows you to search like Google. You can actually type anything, any transaction number, any document number, any text, any description, anything, and SAP will go behind the scenes, search through all of the HANA database to get you all the relevant entries prioritized uh, based on relevance or, or date or uh, some other criteria. Works like Google, uh, but in SAP landscape. Then there is Copilot. This is the, the new cool thing that everybody's talking about. Uh, we all um, like to talk to Siri, sometimes in a joking and funny way, but this is real. This actually gets the job done. Here, you can um, see that SAP has added the tools that allow you to ask a question and take an action. Um, I, I'm not set up right now to show you how you know, my, my, my commands will be responded to, but there, are functional, there is functionality in here that can allow you to ask this is known as Copilot. You know, we haven't named it like Siri or, or Google or anything like that. It's just a Copilot. You can ask it. It'll provide you the details that you're asking for. And in some circumstances, it can actually take actions for you. It's a very helpful tool. Actually, you can see there are some skills already in place. <clears throat> then there is help, which is context sensitive. You can attach this help to anything on the screen and um, you can keep enhancing the help. You can put instructions, you can put a variety of other details, uh, and it becomes context sensitive. Last but not the least, one of the features that comes in handy in user friendliness is this uh, feature around um, what we call notifications. So 
Collaboration is, is a critical element when you're managing working capital. If there is something happen going on in your, in your uh, working capital metric and you need help from someone who is responsible for another area or another company, another region, another plant, you really need to be able to communicate with that person showing the exact same information that you are seeing on your screen. And you can easily capture the screenshots or uh, put a workflow in place and notify that person who can then respond from that notification itself without having to navigate through 10 different T codes and screens to get to that point. Very powerful tool um, in collaboration and it's also available to our customers. So next I'm going to go into showing you some of these uh, metrics. Remember I was talking about being able to summarize the data is very important for you to really start zooming in in the problem areas. So I'm going to go into some of the apps that I've set up and show you how some of the uh, summarization can be done. Let's uh, dive into this critical cash position, which is specifically set up to show you the working capital for this company. The way it is set up is it's showing you the key asset in working capital, the cash, as it is uh, available across different banks and different currencies. So this is as of right now. And from here, you can always go down to the greater details as to which bank group it is from, which country it is sitting in, or if you even want to manage the actual details of how system is building this number up, you can even go and do the cash flow analyzer, which takes it behind the scenes and shows you the actual transactions that are uh, part of that number that you saw there. <clears throat> it's going to run a quick query. And the reason I'm showing this drill down is because this is a very powerful element uh, from right from the top. So you can look at the graphics, you can go in here and you can fetch the right data. I guess um, at this moment I am not running it right, uh, but let me show you another example where you may be able to go into the detail. Let's take another example. So another example, oh, I refresh, sorry. This is the foreign exchange overview screen. And you're looking at this cash position and the uh, liquidity forecast. If you want to go into the details and look at how is that number coming about, I just click into absolute FX net exposures. And because SAP is completely integrated, start to finish, all applications have this link right to the greatest detail to that individual specific financial line item. And that's the power that our customers expect because if you have a problem, of course you want to see the problem at the top, but you also want to go and actually address the problem at the greatest detail so that you get the results. And you can see now right from that graphics, I'm entering the actual transaction level. I'm working from home today, so you can see there's a slight delay in, uh, in responses. Maybe uh, the company code. Sometimes all these parameters are picked by the system and may not be the right ones um, behind the scenes. So let's just uh, run it uh, a little bit open. And what I'm expecting is if there is any transaction underneath, system should be able to show you the transactions. And sometimes all these filters um, they may need to be adjusted to get you the right data. And maybe there's no transaction. Oh, here you go. So these are that's all the details that shows you where that number is coming from and uh, that's the detail behind it. Okay, so that's sort of a look, out, look from your GL. Okay, so summary and analysis is very critical. I want to show you some other apps that are part of our working capital management portfolio. These are all standard deliver, delivered apps which are using the underlying data that I showed you is already in your system. Let's take a look at the account table overview. So this is a dashboard that is available to the um, organization or the individual who is managing the aging of invoices. And this is typically the starting point for anybody who is managing the operations. You can see here is showing the table aging, uh, the invoices that are blocked, suppliers with debit balances, cash discount utilization, how your uh, DPO is, what indirect materials is moving. And you can always configure this um, view for yourself, add more tiles, access more data items, and so on and so forth. 
Another view for receivables. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the receivables overview. There's lots of apps, but I'm just going to show you some of the key ones, and um, I'll be happy to um, discuss this in a follow-up uh, workshop later. So this is a sort of a dashboard offered to receivables management folks. You can see it shows you the uh, breakdown. Um, you have aging analysis, how your DSO is, is moving with respect to time, um, your cash collection tracker, and so on and so forth. Again, highly configurable. And you can add your own tiles, your own data in here. And you can also set up the selection criteria the way exactly you want to monitor. So for example, if you're monitoring only a certain region, where you have encountered problems, you can set up the filter and create your own tile, which you can come in every time and monitor it on a regular basis. You can even extract the data from the screen, have some additional analysis done in a spreadsheet if you prefer, although we recommend not going to spreadsheet at all because everything is out here already, and you want the most latest and greatest information, which is already in the system, so no need to take system out of the system, out of SAP at all. Then, let me show you an example of the inventory tile. I have a better one. Let's pick a plant. And Harish, while you're while you're getting some things ready, we've got about ten minutes left in the webinar, so um, you might wanna, we want to we do want to leave a little bit time for the end as as things get wrapped up. Absolutely, thank you for reminding me. I will take two more minutes. I'll show the the dashboard, the executive dashboard, which is also very powerful. All the information that you saw so far is available straight in your S4 instance. Now there's another layer that sits on top, which we call Analytics Cloud. This is very, very powerful, and some of you who have attended Sapphire may have seen it there. I'm gonna go into one of the examples which we have set up for the demo. This is SAP's internal data, not real. I mean, it is, uh, it's old, maybe not even accurate. So don't go by these numbers. And you heard in the previous um, slides about managing liquidity, managing indebtedness, how much debt you have, how is your liquidity moving, and so on and so forth. All that information can be brought together in an executive dashboard, so when the treasurer is talking to the CFO or the CFO is talking to the CEO, or all of them talking, are talking about you know, their business uh, conditions, you can actually have this in the boardroom. And from here, you can analyze it in a, in a variety of different ways. This is what is what we call SAP Analytics Cloud. Here you can see it's showing you cash, how much you have in commercial paper, money market funds, there is, uh, you know, if you click, I think it actually um, should be, if it's set up, I think it's gonna give you the details behind it. And this is highly configurable. You can choose and set up a variety of things on here. Same is true for indebtedness. Let me click that and give you a quick glimpse of how that looks like. Let me just mention that while you can set this up yourself today, the Analytics Cloud Platform is already available to our customers. Some of these standard uh, templates are still being built and you will get them in the next uh, two or three quarters. You'll see a lot of these things becoming standard part of SAP. In absence of this, you can always build your own. We have a, a very powerful um, set of tools in the Analytics Cloud, which, which is uh, able to access the SAP data behind the scenes in the system and give you this level of detail in the boardroom. So there's a whole bunch of things that are possible and these become the foundation and the building blocks for managing your working capital. Going back to the presentation and um, talking about uh, what is the call to action? So let's just uh, spend a few moments there and then I'll hand it back to um, Kurt and John. I would start by saying that half the job is done if you have SAP platform already because you have that foundation, you have the data. From that point on, you need to start establishing a continuous improvement program where you're constantly watching for these top metrics such as DSO, DPO, or DIO, analyzing the data the way I showed you on the screen, identifying the opportunities where you can take actions, maybe change the terms, maybe change 
customer behavior change uh, inventory, the way it is consumed in the warehouses and so on. And identify those initiatives, prioritize them, plan them, run a project, deploy those, uh, those changes, and come back to SAP to monitor that effect, their effect. If the trends are in the positive direction, that means your actions are creating a difference. You are making a difference and you will benefit from the um, better availability of your working capital. And that's sort of the roadmap and that's the call to action. And of course, you know, we have listed the objectives and it'll empower the financial organizations to get centralized view. You will be able to manage your risks better, make decisions and get more accuracy and predictability to your future business. And of course, there are several benefits. I mean, you will reduce your cash conversion cycle, which leads to better cash flow. Your earnings have potential to grow. Your margins could grow. And your decisions are not going to be uh, shot in the dark, but they will be more fact-based and data-based. And of course, you know, this offers you visualization so you can easily communicate the success as well as monitor uh, the areas that need attention. With that, I'll just mention why you should choose SAP to manage your working capital is because we have the portfolio and the deep access to the underlying data, and data is missing here, uh, which can offer you complete and effective working capital management for your enterprise. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Kurt and John. Thanks, thanks, Suresh. I guess for, for everybody on the call, the one thing that I would encourage people to do is is evaluate your current SAP landscape and see to what extent you're utilizing many of the tools that S that Haresh just spoke about, especially cash management and treasury management. I know your treasury departments probably get inundated with all sorts of calls and solicitations from from various vendors um, touting uh, that, that their workstations do the same thing as SAP, but that simply is not true. So um, we'd look forward to working with uh, anyone in this area, as well as helping you better understand how SAP cash management, SAP treasury, and all other aspects of SAP can help you with your working capital. John, I'll yeah. hand it off to you to you, take us to the finish line. Thank you guys, and, and you know, it, it occurs to me, Haresh, and why I was so excited about this, and every time I see you guys present this, it's just awesome. Um, you know, I, I think to the integration, and why is it so important to have this le this level of integration, and nowhere else are you gonna find the ability to do this without uh, really looking at SAP, and, and it's about the transparency, number one, really having transparency into all of the numbers and being able to go through what you showed Haresh is to ask the high level question and drill down and drill through and drill back into the core applications to answer questions. You know, if you have multiple platforms, you have to send a question to somebody and wait for the answer and get some more reports. Here you have an example of how you can do this real time. Then the speed, um, despite the fact that you're working from home, Haresh, um, the speed with which you can get these answers, whether it's real time through the HANA database or you know, just the fact that it's all integrated in one place is amazing. And of course, lends itself to scalability, right? So if you're an enterprise that's growing and continues to do mergers, acquisitions, and, and other activities, you know, it, it certainly lends itself to that space. And finally, the dynamism or the dynamic aspects, really, you know, as you showed, whether it's in the Ariba payable space, or the accounts receivable, you can begin to ask questions and look at um, scenarios and allow yourself to do analysis, particularly around, you know, if you look at your receivables, what happens if I order discount, you know, I, I, I need cash now, so I wanna offer discounts. How can I do that in the marketplace? How do I extend my payables? Can I factor my payables, which is something interesting I learned about uh, in Amsterdam. So, so thank you for that. One of the things I wanted to talk about just real as we tie this up is Bramasaw has been working carefully with Haresh uh, and his colleagues on this idea of the what we call the compliance journey or the finance innovation journey framework. And the way we talk about it is this concept of comply, optimize, and transform. And we came up with it a while back to look at areas such as IFRS 15 and 16 and 9 and 17 and all of that. But it really applies to what Haresh was talking about in terms of 
your working capital journey. And if you think of what Ian Y said about really making this a strategic initiative, you can think of it in the way of starting first with the idea of compliance, moving to optimization, and then into this idea of transformation. And it's that trans and, and what does that all mean? Well, as you start with compliance, it's really establishing the transactional excellence. How do you take SAP, how do you take accounts receivable and treasury and really create an environment in which you have what we call transactional excellence, clarity around the fact that your transactions are spot on and that they're correct? And then how do you move and take that information through the dashboards and the data that uh, Haresh showed us and Kurt showed us and say, well, now how do I create operational excellence? How do I ensure that I have the links from the front to the back and I'm really optimizing my internal operational um, processes and finally moving to what we call organizational excellence the transformation of using this data like you see in the digital dashboard or in the optimization tools that are available through the rpa tools the machine learning tools and all of that to really drive transformation in your business so in wrapping it up i want to encourage all of you uh, to reach out to us reach out to sap uh, about this. I think it is a fantastic opportunity. Like we said in the beginning, there's over $1 trillion of opportunity. That's $400 million or more in just inventory management alone. Uh, looking at AR and AP, you're talking about $300 million of opportunity in, in, or $300 billion, I'm sorry, billion with a B. Tremendous opportunity out there for all of you. So please, I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Haresh and Kurt, Thank you both for sharing your insights. Uh, we will be doing follow-on um, webinars and, and look for us at upcoming events. Uh, look for us at the SAP uh, Treasury event that's coming up, what Haresh, in November in Chicago. Uh, and also at the AFP, we'll be co-located uh, nearby one another at the Association for Finance Professionals. So thank you all for taking the time out of your day. And we certainly look forward to having you all on future webinars. Have a great day.